Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to create this product render using Blender. To get started, open up a new default Blender file and delete everything in the scene. Then go over to the Scene Properties tab under the Unit dropdown and change the length units from meters to centimeters. Once that is done, go ahead and add a mesh cube to the scene. With the cube selected, press the N key, go to the item dimensions, change the Z dimension to 8 centimeters, and then change the X and Y dimensions to 3.5 centimeters. Apply the object scale by pressing Ctrl plus A and selecting Scale. Next, go over to the Modifiers tab. Add a bevel modifier. Set the bevel amount to 0.3 cm and change the segment number to 3. Right click and press Shade Smooth. Then go into Edit Mode. Select the top face, press the I key, type 0.2 and press Enter. This will inset a face on the top of the mesh. With this inset face selected, Press E and type 0.3 to extrude upwards 0.3 cm. Scale this face down by hitting the S key and dragging inwards a little bit. Select the extruded faces that you just created and press the P key and select Separate by Selection to make this into a new object. This is the cap part of the bottle. Rename your objects if you would like to. Then go to the modifiers tab with the new top object selected and change the bevel amount to 0.1 cm. Then go into edit mode, press A to select everything and subdivide it twice. Select the four innermost faces, press X and select vertices. Select the top edge of vertices and extrude these inwards by hitting E and S. With this top loop of vertices selected, right click and go to the loop tools panel and select circle. Scale the circle down a little bit and then extrude it upwards. Extrude inwards a bit and then extrude downwards. Then inwards again and finally extrude upwards once again. Go to side view mode. Extrude this top rim a little bit more and then rotate this loop a little bit so that it's tilted. With the top loop selected, press E plus S and scale inwards a little. Then press F to fill the top face. Add a subdivision surface modifier to this object set to two subdivisions. In the properties tab, drag the subdivision modifier above the bevel modifier. Sharpen areas by selecting a ring of vertices and pressing shift plus E and typing one. Next, go to the front of the cap in edit mode and select the top two faces. Inset these faces by hitting the I key and dragging the mouse inwards. Select the outer vertical edge on the top side. Double tap the G key. Type negative 0.5 and hit enter. Repeat this on the opposite side. After this, select the two inner faces and extrude them. Then press X and select faces. Add a solidify modifier. Set the thickness value to 0.04 cm. With this object selected, right click in the viewport and select Shade Auto Smooth. Select the loop of vertices around the base of the protrusion and hit Shift plus E. Type 1 and hit Enter to make this transition sharper. The shading on this top part is looking a bit odd at this point, so I recommend using the knife tool to cut some cleaner topology. To do so, press the K key and select the points where you want to cut new edges. Then press Enter to confirm the cut. Then you can dissolve the unnecessary edges to make the mesh look cleaner. Do this as symmetrically as you can on both sides. You can also move the top faces upward a little bit to make the shading better. The cap part is completed now. Select the bottom object, add a solidify modifier and drag it above the bevel modifier. 
set the thickness value to 0.2 centimeters. We are done with the modeling for now. Next, we will set up the scene properties. Go to render mode and switch to cycles GPU compute. Lower the viewport and render samples to something like 100 samples. Enable viewport denoising. Scroll down and click on the drop down name film. Then check the box next to transparent. Go to world properties and add an environment texture. Click open and add a nice HDRI. Next, add a plane and move it down along the z-axis. Then add a camera to the scene. With the camera selected, press Alt plus G and Alt plus R respectively to clear the location and rotation of the camera. Then press RX90 to make the camera face forwards. Move the camera backwards along the y-axis to frame the product in the camera view. For this specific render, I used a vertical camera ratio of 1080 by 1350 pixels. I also set the camera focal length to 85 millimeters. Rotate the camera along the z-axis so that it is facing the product at a slight angle, and rotate downwards along the x-axis to make it looking up slightly. Next, add a dark plastic texture to the top part of the product. Add a glass texture to the body part. Change the glass texture color to a dark orange tint. Next, with the body part selected, Go to edit mode and duplicate a few of the faces. With these faces selected, press P and separate by selection. This new object will be the liquid inside of the bottle. Make the texture of this liquid a bluish tint, so it looks like the bottle is full. Lighting. Add an area light. Rotate it along the x-axis 90 degrees so it faces the product. Move it around and adjust the intensity until you get a nice effect. The lighting is not an exact science, so more or less play around with the lights till it looks good. For this product, I added two more area lights, one behind the product and another one in front. I also added a large reflection plane to add some even bounce light to the product. You can try following my lighting setup, but I recommend playing around with it until you like how yours looks. Label graphics. For the text on the product, we will create a PNG image texture to overlay on the glass texture. For this, I will be using Illustrator, but you can use whatever vector graphics software you want to. Create a blank document set to 4096 by 4096 pixels. Add text and type some product name. The name I used was Hydrating Cosmetic Product. It's just made up, so you can use whatever you want.
change the font of this text to something nice. I used a font called Futura Standard. Duplicate this text block and move it downwards. Change this text to the brand name. I didn't know what to put here, so I just typed brand. Make this text block much larger. Change the font to something that fits with the other font. I used a font called Delicate Calligraphy. Once you choose the font, adjust the scale and position it in the center of the page. Adjust scale, spacing, and kerning until you have a nice looking decal for the product. Make sure the text is pure black and that you don't have any background layer. Export your document as a PNG with transparency enabled. Back in Blender, select the main glass part of the object. Apply all the modifiers on this object. Go to edit mode and add seams around the upper and lower edges of the shape. Then add another seam down the back of the object. Select all of these faces in edit mode and press the U key to unwrap. Then go to render preview mode. Load the image texture that you created into the glass texture as an image texture node. Plug the alpha value from the image texture into the surface socket of the material output. This is just temporary so that we can move and scale the texture map to fit correctly. You will want to open up a UV editing window in order to edit the texture map. In the UV editor window, select all of the faces and move, rotate, and scale the selected faces until the text on the 3D product looks big enough. Also make sure that you change the extension mode on the image texture from repeat to clip so that the texture does not repeat across the whole 3D model. Do any more adjustments to the texture map you feel needed. Once the text is positioned how you want it, we can mix it with the glass texture so the product looks like glass again. In the shader editor, add a principled BSDF node, add a mix shader node, and use this node to mix the principled BSDF with the output of the glass texture. Then use the alpha value from the image texture of the label as the factor on this mix shader node. If the texture now looks like all white with a little bit of glass where the letters are, just switch the position of the nodes in the mix shader. Decrease the roughness value of the principled BSDF. Plug the alpha from the image texture into the normal. Add a bump node in between the image texture and the normal. Use the height socket. This will add a little bit of bump to the edges of the text. The last effect to add to the product is some condensation. In the shader editor, with the glass texture selected, add a principled BSDF node. Then drag in some condensation texture maps. I have included these texture maps for free in the tutorial resource pack. I have linked this in the description. With these textures loaded, preview the roughness map. Add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node to the vector input socket on all three texture maps. 
Then adjust the values on the mapping node until the condensation looks good within the camera view. Plug the roughness map into the roughness socket of the principal DSDF node. Plug the color output of the height map into a bump node. Set the distance on the bump node to 0.01. Plug the color output of the normal map into a normal map node. Add an invert color node in between these two nodes. Then plug the output of the normal map node into the normal socket of the bump node. Plug the bump node output into the normal socket of the principal BSDO. Decrease the strength to 0.5. Adjust the roughness on the condensation with a color ramp node. Now to mix the condensation with the existing glass texture, use a mix shader node with the glass texture in the top shader socket and the condensation in the bottom socket. Use a Fresnel node with a value of 1.5 as a factor of the mix shader. Then go back to the principled BSDF node where the condensation maps are plugged into and change the metallic value to 1. Next, add some water droplets to the outside of the product. For this product, I used a paid add-on called Droplet Generator, but there are free ones available as well. Add droplets and adjust them to your preference. Once the droplets are added, the product is ready to render. Press F12 to render and then save the image as a PNG with transparency enabled. After saving your image, open it with Photoshop or another image editing software to give it some finishing touches. I first added a gradient texture behind the product. Then I did some brightening and darkening to different parts of the render with the brighten and darken brushes. You can also do some adjustments using the camera raw filter in Photoshop. That is how I created this final image. If you followed this tutorial, let me know down in the comments. Also, if you have suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave a comment suggesting something. Thank you for watching.